So here's the interesting thing. We've been talking up to now about these individual molecules that are present in covalent bonds like sugar. So, you know, you, you have sodium chloride where it's this whole big mass where the forces go all the way through because they're all attracted to one another. And we keep saying, well, covalent compounds are different. Covalent compounds have really low melting points. You can melt them over a candle flame in the lab because, you know, we have individual chains of things, individual molecules. They're really attracted to one another, but they're not so attracted across the whole chunk. So, you know, a chunk of sugar you can melt with a candle flame, melt it with a lighter, you know, melt it on the stove top. You can't do that with salt. You can't do that with something that's an ionic compound. There is sort of an exception. There's always an exception. There are some covalently bonded substances that make what are called network compounds. And um, I think. Oh, I have one. I have one. Um, things like diamonds do this. Things like silicon dioxide. Remember I mentioned that silicon di you know, if you ask people what's the most abundant element in the Earth's crust, and they want to say things like, ah, iron, copper, oxygen. What? Rocks are made of oxygen. Many, many rocks are what are called silicate minerals, and they're made of silicon dioxide. Some are silicon trioxide. So we have all this oxygen bound up in a solid form with silicon in rocks. Can you melt a chunk of granite on a stovetop? No, because these are covalent network compounds. So what happens is there aren't any distinct units. So in reality, they're still covalently bonded. They're still non-metal to non-metal. But we're now talking about something where they're forming kind of a lattice that is very much like what we see in ionic compounds. When we go to the Carnegie, um, the piece that we do for chemistry is a trip through the Hall of Minerals, which is astoundingly good. And um, they used to have all the chemical formulas on the, on the rocks down there, and they took them off a few years ago, which I'm still disappointed in. But what you see is that, I mean, these are covalently bonded things, many of them. I mean, some are ionics, but um, there are a lot of things there that are actually covalently bonded substances. You're not going to melt them on a stovetop. You're not going to melt them with a candle. Um, you know, they, have, they require like the heat of the earth to melt. So these, the things that are covalently bonded, they're network compounds. I don't expect you to have any kind of deep... Um, I want you to know these exist, basically. Yeah, they exist. They're, they're kind of a side note. We name them the same way we name um, covalent compounds in general. But what you should know is these don't really represent a molecule. They represent that ratio, just like an ionic compound does. So it's, it's something to note. You don't do a whole lot more with it than that. OK, this is what everybody thinks chemistry is. Acid. Do we get to play with acid? Number one question from the first week. Um, or do we blow things up? So. Acids are really important chemicals. Um, we'll hopefully get to do some titrations with acids towards the end of the year. They're a molecular compound. These are things that are covalently bound and in aqueous solution. So these acids are only what we would recognize as an acid when it is in aqueous solution. We'll talk more about that when we talk about solutions a little bit more. There are two general types of acids, binary. Guess how many things are in a binary acid? Two. Um, the other one are oxy acids. Guess what all oxy acids contain? Oxygen. You guys are clever. So crazy, I know. Um, so as I just said, acids are aqueous solutions. Aqueous means a water-based solution. Um, you can't have an acid without water. It's just a molecular compound until it's an aqueous solution. So a lot of the polyatomic ions that you're starting to get familiar with actually come out of acid solutions very often. So sulfuric acid is sulfate and oh don't do that sulfate anions in you know it's H2SO4 
dissolved in water in aqueous solution, and what that yields is sulfate anions. Nitric acid is related to the nitrate ion. If you look on the bottom of your ion reference, and I've improved it yet again, I'll have new copies for you tomorrow, um, you'll see a list of some of the common acids. I don't expect you to memorize all the acids. I do expect you to be able to tell if something is an oxy acid or a binary acid. We'll talk briefly about the rules for naming them. I forgot, we won't even talk about the rules for naming them until we do the chapter on acids. Um, all, all you need to do right now is be able to use the list on the bottom of the page. That's it. We'll pick up with acids and salts tomorrow. Have a good day, and some of you can retake your quiz tomorrow. Stop.